we heard a bit about in each of uh, the speakers uh, talks about um, consumer concern, consumer concerns, consumer uh, communication to consumers about uh, uh, specifically what you were talking about the the pipelines right. and 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 you know how uh, whether it's the government or or the companies to to sort of communicate the the efforts and safety and the efforts uh, and the importance of it to uh, getting the the resources to these to specifically the Asian markets. Um, how how would you rate Canadian consumers' um, energy literacy in terms of where they know where it comes from and the importance of it to our to our economy and uh, and and does it need to change? Does it need to improve? Well, I think Canadians have a growing sense of just how important the energy business is, but perhaps um, not uh, not very very much in terms of detailed information and. Um, um, as I mentioned during the panel, we uh, we have our own commodity price index at the bank, the Scotiabank Commodity Price Index, and it was reweighted uh, earlier this year. And we discovered that if you look at all net exports from Canada of commodities and resource-based manufactured goods, energy is almost 40%. And within that, crude oil and refined petroleum products loom very large. So it is a huge part of our national economy and therefore um, how the oil and gas sector fares has a huge impact on, I'd say, the wealth of Canadians. So I, I think that you know having adequate pipeline export capability from Canada uh, particularly not only to serve the U.S. market, but really to serve the growth markets of Asia is really critically important for Canada, for our economy. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to hurry up and get some yes. of this decided? Because it is important to get there and, and, and access these markets as quickly as possible before others get in there? Yes. Um, sometimes the regulatory reviews in Canada are very extended. And while we're going through the process of the regulatory review, the window of opportunity for the market opens and then closes. And we have lost um, um, markets uh, because of a very lengthy review process in Canada. Now, Ottawa and the federal government um, have um, uh, really are attempting to narrow that uh, regulatory uh, review uh, in order to, you know, really address that particular issue. Um, there is uh, quite often in international markets a window of market opportunity um, and it's really important to try and take advantage of trade opportunities when they come up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to place our crude oil, for example, in the Chinese market, get Chinese refiners uh, to um, um, really uh, build refineries that can, for example, handle and accept um, uh, blended bitumen, which we have to export from Alberta. So. Um, you know, yes, there are often are uh, windows of opportunity, and you have to be prepared to move quickly to to really access the market and the and the trade opportunities. So, I would agree. Um, I would have liked to have built more pipeline capability to the west coast of Canada, to BC, to access faster growing Asian markets five years ago. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that we haven't done that, we do have some capability, but it's very limited. So I would like to see a fairly quick turnaround on our uh, review of uh, the various um, uh, pipeline proposals and really get going uh, to kind of build our, our trade opportunities. It's not to say that, you know, we, we, we do need, of course, to be very careful about the environment. Uh, the tanker traffic on the BC coast has to be controlled very carefully with very tight regulations on routes and on the way it is done. Uh, and um, um, also very tight regulatory um, requirements for the operation of the pipelines themselves. But uh, I would say that the technology is there to do that, and so we just need to move ahead as quickly as possible to take advantage of the trade opportunities.